us. You know, the word balance is important here because if a system well, is far from equilibrium and we're in what Irvin Laszlo calls a chaos point, it does try to go back to stabilize. Mm -hmm. And I think the reactive politics and reactive religions and uh, fundamentalisms of various kinds are that tendency. It suddenly... <laughs> It's, it's really interesting, things that you thought were already handled, like the idea of contraception. Suddenly we're not supposed to, you know, that's going back to maybe a thought this was more stable before the women's movement. It was more stable before we had all these possibilities. Meanwhile, however, it's not going to, you can't go back. So the system is seeking a higher order. And it will go either to a more benign higher order or it will go to a more controlling, like Nazism was a terrible, terrible thing. There was a chaotic situation and it went into the most possible negative because the chaos allowed the shift. So I don't think we can go back. I don't think you can stay exactly the same. So balance requires you tending towards higher order. So that's the higher balance. Well, we've been in the womb way too long. So, you know, I, I'm, as a mother of five, it probably, we don't know how long it takes a planet to grow up because we've never seen another one. Right. You know, we don't know. If you'd never seen, uh, if you were having a baby and did, never heard of birth, you'd think you were dying. Right. And, and you would think the person is dying if you were watching them give birth. You, you would. And then when you see the baby... <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't know that it was going to grow up, you think, oh my God, what has happened? I mean, really? Yeah. Just, it's, it's kind of horrifying. Well, I have been uh, imagining myself as, as someone who has seen other planets go through this. And I'm looking at people on Earth and realizing they've never seen another planet. Hit their high tech overpopulating polluting phase, and therefore they don't know what's being born through them. They don't know what's emerging. So I'm standing on the other side of the birth with every, everybody else who's able to see this, right? And then to to help us get through the crisis towards something of a higher order of synergy, creativity, love and um, actually breakthroughs of the creature-human condition. You see, you have to actually jump to see this with evolutionary eyes. You know what? I, I, <laughs> that really hits me, too. You know, and I, and I know your time is limited, Barbara, and I could sit here and talk to you all day long. But, um, <laughs> If I could infringe on your kindness just a little, I have somebody here that is a true fan of yours, and he just wants to say hello. Is that okay? Sure. I have another uh, another ten minutes. Okay. Let me put you on here with Peter. Peter is a really good friend of mine, and you'll love this guy. He works with us at the Lotus Guide and does a lot of things for us. Okay. Thank you very much, and it's been an Thank extreme you. pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I feel much better since we talked. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Barbara. Peter Melton, I was in your first uh, Gateway teleconference. Oh, my goodness, um, Peter. Way back, I was living in Ashland, Oregon, working with Neil Donald Walsh back in the days there, and uh, recently reconnected with Shaktari, who's doing a bunch of work with you now, I understand. Yes, she is. Are you living in Oregon? No, I'm in Chico. I'm in Chico here with Rahasha, doing some work with the Lotus Guide. And was ever since, uh, and I know uh, Steve Dynan and, and Deva, and ever since that whole shift thing was coming out, we tried to get the interview for three months ago for our last issue and didn't quite get it. So I was very happy that we were able to put it together for this one. Thank you. Thank you. You are Conscious evolutionary in your worldview? I'm sorry, you cut out there for a second. Do you uh, sort of share a conscious evolutionary worldview? Oh, absolutely. Yes. In fact, I'm in, in communication with uh, Shaktari about that because I have a project that I'm 
sharing with her to through the shift network about that, about how I think the underlying everything is that we need to realize that we're in this together. And, yes. <laughs> and that uh, do unto others as you would have others do unto you because they are you. And that I know. See that that's a characteristic of the universal human. I, I I'm just making up a name that the type of human who feels that way, who just takes it naturally, connected to the heart, to the whole of life, and awakening with these life purpose and desire for contributing and all of that. It's like Mother Earth is giving birth to a co-creative human yes. all over the place. Yes. And we're propping up like daffodils in the spring. You know, when I grew up, I, I was born in 1929, and I, in my younger years and all of that, I never met anybody mm. like me. Yeah. And then I had my five children in Lakeville, Connecticut, never met anyone for 20 years. Then I met one or two in the 60s, and then it started to crop up. And now I think there's a rise of, of a type of human consciousness that's global. It's not a religion, and it's not an organization. It's a person. Yeah. It's that, it's that feeling, that knowing of the connection that we're not separate from our planet. We're not separate from each other. We're not separate from creative force or create the creative energy, the evolutionary energy. Right. That's that's what we are, and that's what the that's what the project is because this feels so much like kind of like the peace the peace movement is the only thing I can compare to it is that we're looking to shift a consciousness through what we're up to, and so that's kind of where my project came out of was this idea of maybe we could have a hand signal like the peace sign that could help people share that this is how they're feeling, and so I came up with one that starts with the two oh, fingers. That Shaktari told me about. Did that. she tell you about the together sign? Oh, that was you who came up with that. That was me. And so I was I, I didn't know if she had a chance to share that with you last she, week or not. She did. We were in uh, where were we? Atlanta together. Yeah. She said she yeah. might have a chance to share that and it's just been welling up in me that that, that signal to I, say we appear to be separate and we're not. Um See, so how that, did you know all right, how do you know that? How did you figure that out? Well <laughs> wow, there's a good no one's asked that question. Um <laughs> Well, all this feeling of oneness and this whole spiritual angle about oneness and how we're connected and, and that who we really are, I think it came through the spiritual angle of who we really are is this life energy, this evolutionary urge, this life, lifing, if you will. Um, and if that's the case, if that's what I am, then I'm just an expression of that. And so are you. And so is Rahasha. And so are all of we kind of like the ocean is the ocean, but if a wave took on human consciousness, it would think, oh my God, I'm just this little wave and not remember that it's actually the ocean expressing. And so that parable of the ocean and the wave really sunk deep with me to say that's the same thing we're dealing with is that we are this evolutionary flow, but we're convinced somehow that we're some separate little being. Yeah. So, so what you're really expressing, I think, is that evolutionary human understanding yeah. which has been in great beings for, for thousands of years, but as a type of human, as a new norm, as millions of people feeling this way, is something really significant. And I'm so glad to meet you, Peter, and I do need to go now. Yes, thank you for your extra minute, and yeah. thank you for the interview. And together. Keep on doing the great work. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Right. Bye, well. everybody. Thanks.